girls and welcome back to another week of Illuminate. I hope you're ready to have lots of fun. So the first thing we need to do is get warmed up. So up, off your seats and onto your feet and give yourself a big shake and let's get ready to warm up. So this week we're going to do a new one called Boogaloo. Okay, but I need a helper for this one. So everybody welcome my helper. What's the fly? Andrew! Hiya. We're social distancing, so he needs to stay in the background. But he'll shout so everybody can hear him. What you guys need to do is say everything that he says. So I'm going to ask you, have you done a certain dance move? For example, have you done the boogaloo? What's that you say? Okay, so you need to copy him. Are you ready? Everybody ready? Good to go? You oh, ready? I, I was born out Right, good to go. Let me see you boogaloo. What's that you said? I said, let me see you boogaloo. What's that you said? I said, boogaloo. Boom, boogaloo. I said, boogaloo. Boom, boogaloo. Let me see your crocodile. What's that you said? I said, let me see your crocodile. What's that you said? I said, crocodile. Cro crocodile. I said, boogaloo. Boo-boo-galoo. Let me see your popping corn. What's that you say? I said, let me see your popping corn. What's that you say? I said, popping corn. Pop, popping corn. I said, crop, get down. Crop, crop, get down. I said, boo-galoo. Boo-boo-galoo. Let me see your hula hoop. What's that you say? I said, let me see your hula hoop. What's that you say? I said, hula hoop. What's that you said? I said, let me see you mow the lawn. What's that you said? I said, mow the lawn, mow, mow the lawn. I said, hula hoop, hoop, hula hoop. I said, popping corn, pop, popping corn. I said, crack, get down, crack, crack, get down. I said, boo, galoo, boo, boo, galoo. Let me see you drive your car. What's that you say? I said, let me see you drive your car. What's that you say? I said, drive your car. Drive, drive your car. I said, mow the lawn. Mow, mow the lawn. I said, hula hoop. Hula hoop. I said, pop, pink coat. Pop, pop, pink coat. I said, crack, get down. Crack, crack, get down. I said, boogaloo. Boogaloo. Let me see you fly your plane. What's that? Let me see you fly your plane. What's that you say? I said, fly your plane. Fly, fly your plane. I said, drop your car. Drop, drop your car. I said, mow the lawn. Mow, mow the lawn. I said, hula hoop. Hula hoop. I said, pop, pink coat. Pop, pop, pink coat. I said, crack, get down. Crack, crack, get down. I said, galoop. Boogaloo. Boogaloo. Let me see you go to sleep. What's that you say? I said, let me see you go to sleep. What's that you say? I said, go to sleep. Go, go to sleep. I said, go to sleep. Go, go to sleep. Oh, so, boys and girls, are you all warmed up? Are you all warmed up? Oh, yeah. I'm knackered now because you got that. <laughs> I'm all warmed up and ready to worship. So, guys, do you remember our song from last week? Shine. Shine. The inside out. Oh, no. Shine. Don't listen. Don't <laughs> so, guys, let's get ready to worship. Shine from the inside out that the world will see you live in me. Shine from the inside out that the world will see you live in me. You know me and you love me. You fill me. So send me to shine from the inside out. That the world will see you live in me. Shine 
from the inside out that the world will see you live in me. Good morning, everybody. It's challenge time. Last week we saw the challengers do the mimes, and it was fantastic. It was good fun. And Charlie did an amazing 40 seconds. But this week you've been sending in your challenges to see if you can beat Charlie. Let's watch them now and see how you get on. Move red. Yes. Red and the basic off. <laughs> Getting dressed. Yes. Head, shoulders, knees. Dancing. Shy. Yes. Uh, Washing your hair. Yes. Um, typing. Writing. Yes. Waking up. Salt and vinegar. Cereal. Breakfast. Reading your Bible. Dusting. Blowing out a cobweb. Blowing out a candle. Yes. You're cycling. Cy yes. Yay. Yeah. Oh, um, can I do this? Oh, I didn't say Oh, you can't say I didn't hear. I didn't hear what was right. Let me see. Um, Putting your clothes on. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Um, oh, Don't say it out loud, Harry. <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> Cold, shivering, oh, like, uh, rubbing your belly, no, hungry. No. <laughs> oh dear, okay. dear, we're not doing very well. <laughs> writing, writing yeah, a letter, like... um, reading a computer, typing a computer, no, emailing, use a pencil, paper, you know. writing a list. No. Right about, uh, doing work? Yeah, yeah. what work? Homework? Yeah, like work, yeah, okay. okay. Um, oh, how, how are you meant to do this? Like, less than you go, are you eating the bowl and like, no. Um, are you like making something? Like no, cooking, yeah, baking? Kind of, mm, yeah. Baking, dinner, making a cake? No. Stirring, eating? Yeah, eating, cereal, whatever. Okay. Um, oh. <laughs> tired, tired out, puffed out, cleaning, spraying, blowing, blowing what? Blow, blowing dirt. <laughs> Why dirt? <laughs> I don't know, because he was spraying. Oh, the wind, windy. <laughs> no. Um, blow. Oh, blowing out candles! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, so and go. Up on the floor. Hoovering. Riding a bike. Putting on jeans. Putting Getting on dressed. Trousers. Dancing. Shine from the inside. Very <laughs> <Right. laughs> Combing your hair. Scratching. Your hair. Get scratching. washed. Get washed. 
Oh my goodness, Ruby, come on now. Painting? Dabbling. Two words, there's two words in it. I don't know. One and one, two, doing maths work. Homework, school work. Pouring a drink. Baking, eating, making your dinner. Eating. Drinking soup. <laughs> eating cereal. Yes. <laughs> Kissing, blowing. Cooling something down, blowing. Is that the mark? Wow. Hey guys, fantastic work with all your challenges. That was brilliant. Um, however, it wasn't good enough to beat Charlie's score. He gets the point for this week. Um, but never mind, we've always got another time for another challenge. So with that in mind, the next challenge for our challenges is this. We have asked them to do bottle flip. You know, where you flip the bottle in the air and they have one minute to try and do as many as they can. Let's watch and see how they got on. <laughs> Well done, Charlie. You did it. You won the bottle flip challenge out of the challenges. So well done. However, I think he went a little bit over the minute. So we're going to say that you successfully did 20 bottle flips within a minute. So well done. So remember, you've got to keep it in that minute, everyone. Okay, let's look at the scoreboard. So we have Ash with one point. We have Andy with one point. We have um, our illuminators with two points and we have Charlie with three points. He's in the lead. Okay. But guys, it's now time to get that win. Let's see if we can take over Charlie. So next week we want you to send in your bottle flip challenges. Remember you have one minute to see how many you can do. Okay. How many times you can land the bottle successfully. One minute. Okay. Send them to illuminate at carrigelamchurch.co.uk. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. So, boys and girls, it is now time for us to do our memory verse. So, you might remember this one. It's from last year's Illuminate Club. Have a guess what it is? All right, Fitz might give it away. It's John 316, Rob. So, everybody up off your seats. Give yourself a big shake. Let's get ready to do it.
Okay guys, it's results time now for our quiz. We had a quiz last week after our story, Daniel and the Lion's Den. So if you have your answers, go grab them now. Question number one. What did Daniel do every day, three times a day? Answer. He prayed and he did it three times a day. Question number two. Why did the other king's advisors not like Daniel? The answer is, they didn't like him because the king trusted him the most. So he was the king's favourite and that made the advisors jealous. Question number three. Daniel could do no wrong in the king's eyes, but the other advisors needed to get rid of him because of this. How did they decide to get rid of him? The answer is, they created a new law that meant that you could only worship the king, King Darius, and no one else. Question number four. When Daniel knew he could get into lots of trouble for breaking the law and end up in the den, what did he do? Answer, he carried on praying and thanking God anyway. Question number five. If you get upset or have a problem or some bad situation, what can you do? The answer is pray. Pray to God, talk to God and your parents too. Hi everybody. Well, how did you get on with the quiz? I'm sure you got them all right because you are so clever. Remember, there will be some questions at the end of today's lesson as well. So get comfy, you comfy, and switch on your listening ears. This weekend, there was a very special day celebrated. Does anybody know what it was? Well, on Friday, it was 75 years since VE Day. I think Andy was just a baby on VE Day. And VE stands for Victory in Europe. And this day marked the end of six long years of the Second World War. It was an end to the war that had cost millions of lives, had destroyed homes and towns and cities and caused a lot of sadness and suffering to people all over the world. Many people had lost their homes, many had lost their lives and people lived in fear. I'm sure it had seemed that it would never end. But finally, the best news came. The war was over. And the next day, everybody got the day off. Off school, off work, off everything. And huge celebrations erupted. People in Carrick, in Ballyclare, England, Scotland, and all over the world had huge street parties. They put up bunting and colorful flags on their homes and in the streets. They danced and had fireworks and parades and Thanksgiving services in churches. The victory had come at a great cost but it had been won and we still celebrate it today. And you know, the Bible is full of loads of stories about God's great victories and his people celebrating his mighty power. Many people in the Bible went through really tough times, but God was with them and gave them victory in their circumstances. We might not be in a world war or anything like that, but you and I can go through tough and scary times as well. There are loads of things that can make life hard, but we can look to God and remember who he is, what he has done and what he promises to do. And we can celebrate knowing that he is always on our side. And the Bible shows different ways that God gave his people victory over situations in their lives. The first is victory through courage and obedience. Did you get that? Now I know Jo told us about Daniel last week and she told him about told us about how God protected him in the lion's den. He was about 80 when that happened. But see, even whenever he was younger, he had really scary times. God's people were at war. There had been many battles. And once again, King Nebuchadnezzar had sent his armies to overthrow Jerusalem. And this time they won. The king ordered his commanders to bring back the strong, healthy and clever young men. Daniel was taken prisoner away from his home and friends and family to a strange place where people didn't look like him, they didn't speak like him, they didn't act like him, and most importantly, they didn't love, obey, or know God like he did. In fact, they made their own statues and worshiped them instead. Daniel's name was even changed to try to make him forget who he was, where he came from, and the one true God. 
Now Daniel was treated really well. He had good food, he had a great job, but he found himself in situations where he had to stand up for what was right and what he believed. He had to choose between doing what was easy, even though he knew it was wrong, and standing up and obeying God, even though it was hard. And we know that Daniel, time and time again, chose God. Daniel was courageous. He chose to stand up for what was right. And sometimes we are in situations where we have to choose to stand up for God. Maybe our friends are making jokes or saying words we know they shouldn't really be saying, but because there's no adults about then, you know, they think it's okay. We can choose to join in with them or to walk away and not be involved. Maybe people are making fun of somebody in school who's a bit different to us. We can be tempted to join in and just say, oh, sure, it's a wee bit of fun. Or we could stick up for the other person and be a good friend to them. It is sometimes hard to do the right thing. We don't want people to laugh at us or think we're scared. Daniel chose to be brave and God honoured and protected him, even in the lion's den. He was made top man in the king kingdom and served under four kings. The Bible tells us, be strong and brave. Don't be discouraged, for God will be with you wherever you go. Remember, the God who was with Daniel in the lion's den is the God who promises to be with us always too. And the second one is victory through faith. Who remembers David? We all know that David had faith in God. I mean, he went out and fought a giant. Would you go out and fight a giant? I don't think I would fancy it. But did you know that he wrote lots of songs? They're kind of like prayers as well. They are called the Psalms. They're very famous and they are full of God, David's worship to God. One goes something like this. God is my shepherd and I am his little lamb. He feeds me, he guides me and he looks after me. He gives me everything I need. Inside my heart is very quiet. Like lying still in soft grass in a meadow by a little stream. Even though I walk through dark, scary, scary, lonely places, I won't be afraid. Because the shepherd knows where I am. He is here with me. He keeps me safe. He rescues me. He makes me strong and brave. He is getting wonderful things ready for me, especially for me. Everything I ever dreamed of. He fills my heart so full of happiness I can't hold it all inside. Wherever I go, I know that God's never stopping, never giving up, always and forever love will go too. Wow. David believed with all his heart that God was with him, that he was looking after him and that he had a plan for him and his, and his life and would always love him. It got him through some really tough times, like when he had to fight Goliath and like when King Saul was hunting, hunting him down and trying to kill him, like when his best friend died like when he messed up really badly and thought there was no way back. But David learned that God was always with him and could take the biggest mess and make it work in his plan. Even with only a little bit of faith, our God can do anything because he is great. Do you have faith that God is always with you? Do you believe that God has a great plan for your life? Because he does. Do you believe that if we say sorry, that God forgives us? And that his love for us is everlasting because it is and he is with us always just like he was with David. Okay the third one is victory through unity. The king of Babylon had a very beautiful wife called Vashti. He was having a party one night and he wanted to show her off to all his friends so he asked her to come down and show everyone how pretty she was and she was like no way I am not doing that. She refused to come down and he was very cross. His advisor Haman was a pretty bad man. He teased the king and he said, oh, she made you look so silly in front of all those people. You're meant to be the king and she embarrassed you. So he convinced her to get rid of his wife and to kill her. So the king was now looking for a new wife. He told his scouts to go out and look round the kingdom and find the most beautiful woman in the whole land. And they find Esther, who was beautiful and kind and loved God. But the Babylonians did not like the Jews. And guess what? Not only was Esther a Jew, but
but her uncle was the leader of the Jews. His name was Mordecai. So Esther had to keep her faith a secret. Esther became queen and Haman became more and more powerful. Soon he was prime minister. He thought he was so important that everybody should bow down to him. Except Mordecai refused because he knew that he shouldn't be bowing down and worshipping anybody but God. Haman was so raging. I can just see the angry little dance he was doing. There was probably steam coming out his ears and his nose. His face was probably bright red and he was so angry. So angry that he went to the king and asked him to sign a decree that would allow him to kill all of the Jews. Every single one of them. Mordecai heard what was happening, what Haman was up to, and he sent a secret message to Esther, telling her what Haman was planning and asking her to go the king, to the king on behalf of his people. Esther was frightened. She wasn't allowed to just go to the king and say, here, I want to speak to you. He had to call for her, and she remembered what had happened to his last queen. So she asked the people, to pray and fast for her for three days, to pray to God, three whole days before she went to the king and not take any food. And then she went to the king and she asked him. And at first he was very angry, but then he listened to her. The king remembered that Mordecai had saved his life at one time. Eventually, Esther shared her secret and begged the king to save her people. And he did. Esther had risked her life and God used her to save them all. Remember, she asked her people to stand with her by praying for her for three days before she went to the king. And that's really important. That's called unity, coming together as one. And it's important that as Christians, we have unity. God can help us by coming to illuminate and learning more about him together, by using the prayer time to pray for each other and to ask for prayer for things we are worried about or by asking our leaders or our mums and dads, grannies and grandas questions about God, the Bible, or to pray for us and asking if we can pray for them too. And you know, the Jews still celebrate God's victory and remember Esther every single year. So they do. The fourth one is the most important one. It's victory through Jesus. Like I said, this is the most important victory of all. You see, at first, God and Adam and Eve had a wonderful close friendship. They walked and talked together and enjoyed each other's company, just as it should have been. But when sin came into God's perfect world, something awful happened. You see, God is holy. This means that he hates sin. He can't be near it. And Adam and Eve were separated from God. And every person born since then, you and me, all of us have the same problem, sin and separation from God, not only here on earth, but in heaven as well. And the Bible tells us that the payment for sin is death, but God didn't want it to be like this. He didn't because he loves us and he wants to have a relationship with us. And you know, he had an amazing rescue plan and Jesus came down from heaven. And even though he was the only person who had never sinned, he was the only person who didn't deserve death. He died in our place. He died on the cross for all my sins and all your sins. And the soldiers laughed at him and said, you say you've come to rescue us, but you can't even rescue yourself. But you know, they were wrong. It wasn't the nails that held Jesus on the tree. It was love for you and me. And we know that Jesus was dead and buried, and he, but he did not stay dead. He rose again three days later, because he had victory and power over Satan and death and sin, and there is nothing greater than him. And you know, all we have to do is accept we are a sinner and there's nothing we can do to save ourselves, that we need Jesus and believe that he died to take the punishment for our sins and rose again and ask him to forgive us. Have you done that? Have you had your sins forgiven? Will you go to heaven one day? Because that's what... That's what the reward is. The Bible tells us that the gift of God is eternal life in heaven. And you know, this was the greatest victory of all. And the greatest victory deserves the biggest party. The Bible's, Bible tells us that when someone comes to Jesus, there is a huge celebration in heaven. 
Has there been a celebration in heaven over you yet? And if you have had your sins forgiven, and if you are a Christian, then we are God's friend and a member of his family. He wants us to have victory every day. He wants us to grow to be more like him. And here's a handy way to remember how to grow to be more like Jesus. Pray. Read your Bible. Obey what it says. Tell others about Jesus and go to church to learn more about him. And you know, that's a great way that we can have victory in our lives through Jesus. Okay, I'm just going to close in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for the good time that we've had here today learning about you. We thank you, Lord, for all the amazing things that you have done. We thank you, Lord, that nothing is stronger or bigger than you. We thank you, Lord, that you are always with us. That You've promised to never leave us. And Lord, thank you for keeping us safe and well. Lord, I ask you that we'll have a good day together with our families and bring us back together next week. Amen. I hope you were listening really well. I have some questions for you. Okay, are you ready? Who's going to get them right? So, number one. <laughs> What day was celebrated this weekend and how many years ago did it happen? Okay, number two. <laughs> I want you to name the first way that God can give us, his people, victory over their circumstances and complete with actions. Okay, number three. I want the second way that God can give his people victory over their circumstances, complete with actions. Number four, you got it. I want the third way that God gave his people victory over their circumstances and I want the actions. Okay, question number five. What was the greatest victory? Okay. What was the greatest victory? Complete with actions. Remember the actions. Okay. Um, okay, question number six. We'll make this the last question. How can we grow in God? Okay, remember the hand. Okay, how can we grow in God? Good luck, everybody. Boys and girls, thanks for joining us at another week of Illuminate. If you have any more questions about who God is or what it is to become a Christian and put your trust in him, email us at illuminate at carrickainhamchurch.co.uk. We'd love to chat to you and teach you more about God. So thanks for joining us. If you want to send us some videos um, to join in with the challenge or the dances, send it to us even if you haven't been to Illuminate before. If you're joining us online for the first time, we would love to see some new faces because now you're a part of the Illuminate family. Thank you, have a good week.